Yo, what's up everyone? My name is Dave and you suck at programming. Alright, today we're gonna demystify running programs in Bash. You might be thinking, running programs in Bash? That's super simple. I type the program name and I hit enter. Well, let's get into how complicated it can be. Alright, to start off, let's run echo dash e hello world. Really simple. We can see that it prints hello world. The dash e was written or was read by the built-in echo. How do I know it's a built-in? Well, I can run type on echo and see that's a built-in. There's also an external command echo where I can use, uh, I can run which to see it. So if I were to rerun that same command with bin echo, you would see that it didn't interpret the dash E. That's because bin echo is different than the bash built in. When in doubt, run type dash A, and you can see every possible thing. Bash will start at the top and work its way down. So it'll prefer the shell built in before the command. That's very simple. I'm just reiterating what I went over in last episode. Let's complicate things. Well, the first way to complicate things is when I'm running interactively, I can make an alias. I can make an alias called echo, and I can set that to echo foo. So now every time I run echo, like echo hello world, You'll see that foo shows up in front of it. That's because it's replacing echo with echo foo. If I were to run echo dash e hello world, you can see the dash e is no longer being interpreted by echo. That's because it's coming after foo. It's not being interpreted as an argument. So that throws a little wrench in the problem. Let's make it even more complicated. You ready? This is going to be a lot of fun. Let's make a function called echo and let's have it call echo bar with all the original arguments. I'm not going to hit enter yet. The reason I'm not going to hit enter yet is because if I define this function, this is actually potentially very dangerous. This function calls itself. That's recursive. I will blow out the stack if I do this. It will just keep piling up. It will go into an infinite loop of trying to call itself. So in bash, if I want this to not call itself, I have to put the word command in front of it. Command is a built in. You can run help command to find out more. Command will tell it to go through the normal processing. It will skip the functions. It'll skip the aliases. It will go right to the built in if I run command. So there we go. Now I have a function. Now I have an alias. So what does that mean if we run type dash a echo? Ooh, we got a lot going on here. The first thing we have is the alias. Aliases are preferred first. The next thing we have is the function. Functions are preferred next. The next thing we have is the shell built in. And the next thing we have is the external command. So if I were to run echo dash e hello world, what would happen? Well, it's really simple. We can just run it and find out. Okay, we got bar foo dash e hello world. Why did that happen? You guys might be asking me. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to break down exactly how that happened. So first things first, we ran echo with dash e hello world. That's the arguments we gave it. So what got ran first? Well, the first thing we run is the alias. The alias runs echo with foo as the first argument. So let's put foo right in front of it. That's the first thing that happened. The next thing it is, the next thing that happened is we moved on to the function. So the alias called the function bar with all of the original arguments in front of it. So it put bar here, it ran all the original functions in front of it, and then because of command, it ran the shell built-in. So the shell built-in echo got ran with bar, foo, dash e, hello world. And we can verify this by running it manually ourselves. If we were to do command echo, we get the exact same thing. That's how it ran. The only difference is I have one big screen, these got ran as separate arguments. But yeah, that's demystifying commands in bash.